want him to say, Father. We ask you to bless our praise and worship team. And uh, bless us all as we leave here, Father, that you just fill us with your Holy Spirit. This is your church, and we love you and we thank you. And it's in your son's precious and holy name and all of God's children said. Good morning. All right, so you all, this is a new year. This is our first time being up here this year because we had the play last year. And I want it to be different this year. You all want us to praise God freely. I want us to praise God openly. I want us to just lift God up in praise no matter what our circumstances are. So you all, our first song, O Church Choir, you all stand up and praise God with us this morning. There's revival in his name. Fire in my heart. Is that the right key? It sounds really low. We're going to try again. All right. A little fun music lesson. That's called a whole different key. That we didn't practice it in. All right. This is Old Church Choir the Right Way. <laughs> that sounds much better. There's revival and it's spreading. Like a wildfire in my heart. Sunday morning, hallelujah. And it's lasting all week long. Can you hear it? Can you feel it? It's the rhythm of a gospel song. Once you choose it, you can lose it. And there ain't nothing, there ain't nothing that's gonna steal my joy. I got an old church choir singing in my soul. I got a sweet salvation and it's beautiful. I got a heart overflowing cause I've been restored. There ain't nothing gonna steal my joy. No, there ain't nothing gonna steal my joy. The valleys that I wander turn to mountains that I can't climb. Well, you're with me, never leave me. And there, there ain't nothing, there ain't nothing that's gonna steal my joy. I got an old church choir singing in my soul. I got a sweet salvation and it's beautiful. I got a heart overflowing cause I've been restored. There ain't nothing gonna steal my joy. No, there ain't nothing gonna steal my joy. Clap your hands and stomp your feet till you find that gospel beat Cause he's all you'll ever need, all you'll ever need Clap your hands and stomp your feet till you find that gospel beat Cause he's all you'll ever need, all you'll ever need I've got an old church choir 
singing in my soul i've got a sweet salvation and it's beautiful i've got an old church choir singing in my soul i got a sweet salvation and it's beautiful i got a heart overflowing because i've been restored there ain't nothing gonna steal my joy Oh, there ain't nothing gonna steal my joy. Oh, there ain't nothing gonna steal my joy. All right, is Waze, you got something to say? hear what I sound like out there, Joey. <laughs> I can only hear what I sound like up here. I sound good up here, right? <laughs> All right, as we sing this next song, y'all go around and welcome somebody here and just greet somebody with a hug this morning. Anytime my heart turns from darkness to light, anytime temptation comes and someone stands to fight, anytime somebody lives to serve and I'll be served, I know, I know, I know, I know, God is on the move, on the move, hallelujah, God is Time and weakness, someone falls upon their knees or dares to speak the truth that sets men free. Anytime the choice is made to stand up on the word, I know, I know, I know, I know. God is on the move, on the move, hallelujah. God is on the move in many mighty ways. God is. The gospel stirs a search of souls, and someone says, send me here I go. I know, I know, I know, I know, God is on the move, on the move, hallelujah, God is on the move in many mighty ways, God is on the move, on the move, hallelujah, God is on the move, on the move today. Children's time. All children, make your way down front. All right, good morning. So today I brought something with me in this backpack and it deals with something that starts up, when it starts to get cold in Kentucky, I don't like it. I don't like the cold, I don't like being outside when it's cold, but there's one thing, hang on just a second, bub. There's one thing in Kentucky when it starts to get cold, I know is coming and I'm getting really excited. And it's in this bag. So does anybody besides the Burns Bunch have any guesses what could be in here? What do you think could be in here? The Grinch. That's a good, that's a good, 
guess? Does anybody else have any guesses? What do you got, buddy? What would you say? Santa? It, it's definitely not Santa, but that's a good guess. Lucia, you know what's in the bag, so you can't guess. Does anybody else have any guesses? I'm going to give you a hint. So it's something round, and it's something that's orange generally. A basketball. A basketball. Oscar, you want to pull it out and show them what we got? <laughs> it's a basketball. So in Kentucky, when it starts to get cold, I know basketball season is about to start up. And growing up, I played basketball for several years. And not only do I enjoy playing, but I enjoy watching it like on TV. I enjoy going to sporting events and watching it for myself. I even love to listen to it on the radio because basketball, it, it's my thing. So God has brought me to a different season in life right now where I'm not playing basketball. But yesterday, I got to go to a game, and I got to sit in the stands as a parent, and I got to watch Oscar play his very first game. <laughs> and so as I was watching, it was not only Oscar's first game, but there were several other little boys and girls who had never played a game before. And the coaches are hollering stuff, the refs are hollering stuff, the parents are hollering stuff. And I was just really enjoying it. So obviously, a very important part of the game is the ball itself, right? Because if you didn't have the basketball, you couldn't play. And so I was noticing there was this one little boy, and he always wanted that ball. He wanted to be the one that shot it. He wanted to be the one that held it. He sometimes forgot to dribble, but he wanted the ball. And, you know, you have to learn, like, I have to pass the ball. I have to share the ball. I have to look for an open teammate. And so then... One of the things I caught myself saying is when Oscar's team didn't have the ball, I was hollering, guard your man, guard your man. Because when your team doesn't have the ball, that is like one of the most important things. You want to try to get that ball or you want to try to block that ball from going into goal. And so because he's an early learner, they have these little armbands. And so when he had the blue one on, he knew he needed to guard the other teammate in blue. And so I kept saying, find the blue guy, find the blue guy. And so this morning, I was kind of thinking about yesterday, and I was thinking about, like, what the Word of God says about guarding. So this morning, I have some Bible verses, um, and it's kind of lengthy, but it comes from Proverbs, and I want to start at verse 20. It says, My son, pay attention to what I say. Turn your ear to my words. Do not let them out of your sight. Keep them within your heart, for they are life to those who find them, and health to one's whole body. Above all else, guard your heart, for everything you do flows from it. Keep your mouth free from perversity. Keep corrupt talk from your lips. Let the eyes look straight ahead and fix your gaze directly before you. Give careful thought to the paths of your feet and be steadfast in all your ways. Do not turn to the right and do not turn to the left, but keep your foot from evil. So the word of God tells us that we got to play defense. That, yeah, it's cool to be that player with the ball that gets to shoot it, shoot it. And, you know, the focus is on you. But that's not what Jesus is called. Jesus has called us to step out and to be that hand of his. And so this morning I was just thinking about, you know, God, I like when I get to do things. And sometimes the focus is on me. But you know what? That's not what you've called me to do. You call me to be that Christian that steps up and says, when I see a friend, God, I don't want to be the focus, but I want to be the one maybe that puts my arm out and says, Satan, you don't have the right. You don't have the way. So this week, I want to challenge you all as you go to school. It might be a friend that's getting made fun of in the bathroom. It might be somebody in the lunchroom that people aren't being kind to. That you say, you know what, I want to step out and I want to be different. That I want to be the person that helps guard my friends and guard my family. Maybe someone you know sick and you can say, enemy, you don't have the right. I'm going to step out. I'm going to put my hands out. Sometimes we surrender and we put our hands to God. But I think it's okay to put our hands out too and say, God, no, I'm going to protect my friends and family. I'm going to maybe protect the ones that have been unkind to me because I don't want harm's way touching them. 
So this morning, instead of getting on our hands and knees, I want you kiddos to stand up, okay? And this is how we're going to pray. I want you to get down if you play basketball, and I want you to put your hands out. And this morning, we're going to pray. Can you put the paw down, Oscar? Stand up, please. Stand up. Let's have listening ears. And I want you to put your hands out, and we're going to pray in defense this morning. Are you guys ready? All right. Jesus, we come to you this morning, God, with our hands out. God, we block anything that isn't of you. I pray in Jesus' name that you put your guard of protection around each young person here this morning. God, from the youngest to the oldest. God, in Jesus' name, we cast out the enemy. We declare your goodness in our life, in our friends, in our family, and God, even those we don't know. So this morning, we play defense, and we claim the victory in your son's name. Amen. Good morning, church. I want to take a few minutes since it's the first of the year to let you know what we're doing in Children's Church. You know, back last year when um, we the church decided to uh, make some cho- changes in the Children's Church, um, and I was asked to step up, it has been my privilege to be able to from the Holy Spirit giving me everything that he would, he, that this church and the Holy Spirit and Lord Jesus Christ wants to see our future church to know. And as I've said before, it's all about, it's all about him. And uh, so I'm asking all the parents once again to uh, support us. You know, the teachers that, go up on Sundays and Wednesday nights. They need your support. Have your children, please bring your kids. Have them be respectful of the teachers when they're in their teaching because they're teaching God's word. They're not teaching math and science and and stuff at school. They're teaching God's word. And that's something that they're going to need to take with them all through life. They may may never use science again or math again, probably, but even still, we want them to have God in their life, all of their life. So we put in place a lot of different things, and one of the things that we put in place was I wanted the kids to know every book of the Bible. We started from Genesis, and we're working our way through, and this month we're in the book of Numbers, but One of the things I ask, if you'll recall back last year, if any child knew the books of the Bible, they would get a gift certificate. And we have a child that actually knows every book of the Bible, and I'm asking Peyton to come forward. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, First and Second Samuel, First and Second Kings, First and Second Corinthians, Ezra, ne- Nehemiah, Esther, Job, Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastics, Song of Solomon, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Z- Limitations, Ezekiel, Daniel, Jose, Joe, Amos, Obadiah. Obadiah. Okay. Okay. Obadiah. <laughs> Nahum. Habaku. And then we got Zephaniah, Haggia, Zechariah, Malachi, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, Acts, Romans. First and Second Corinthians, and then 
we got we got Ephe or Gal Galatians, Ephesians, and then Philippians, Colossians, First and Second Thessalonians, uh, First and Second Timothy, Titus. Philemon, Germany. <laughs> Hebrews, James, and then first and second Peter, first, second, third John, and then Jude and Revelation. Well, Peyton, that's going to be hard to follow. Because I bet there's not anyone in this church that can get up and follow and do what you did. You know, that's unfortunate. You know, I saw on one of the social medias where this guy was going around in a grocery store and saying, here's $50 if you can give, say, one verse out of the Bible. People either walk off, ignore him. They didn't know any verse of the Bible. Not one verse. $50 if you know a verse in the Bible. We're not going to have that happen with our church. Amen. Yeah. One of the things that the children are doing, and please try to, to support them in doing this, when they're released to go back to their class, the downstairs class will be doing the book of numbers and craft, but they're also still doing their prayers. And guys, I'm reading their prayer cards. They're praying for their families. Their, their sisters, or brothers, or aunts, their uncles, or dogs, or cats. They are praying for you, and they're putting that up on the board. That's a prayer coming from a pure spirit to God. They're also tithing. So please remember to give your children, it doesn't have to be a great amount, a nickel, a penny, a dime. But what, they're, what that's doing is teaching them, we, we give God first. Amen. We give God first of everything. Amen. We want them to know that if God comes first in their life from the time that they're, they leave here, that they go to high school, they go to college, get married. They're always going to remember God gets it first. And they'll be you can't outgive God. Hallelujah. And they need to know that now. They need to learn that now. I want to take a minute to thank uh, the elders of the church. You all have been so supportive of everything that we've done in Children's Church. Uh, I've never gone up and asked for anything that you haven't said uh, no. It's always been sure. What, what, what can we do to help? And I hope you all saw that with the Christmas play. I mean, that all costs money to do that. We were able to do the Christmas play because of what you all allowed us to be able to buy and purchase to be able to make that happen. And I want to thank you for it. And also, children, you all have brand new Bibles that will be in your classroom today. And that's also the red letter Bibles. So you'll be able to see God's word in red in the New Testament. And also, I don't know if you parents have realized all of the changes that the elders have made in putting that outdoor play set for the kids to go out this summer. Nursery. I want to thank Miss Kay. I know she doesn't want thanks for what she does. She does it all because the Holy Spirit calls her to do it. But still, I want to acknowledge you for all the times that you were here teaching the children. You know, all of the play that from the beginning of the birth of Christ to the ascension, she taught each child every Sunday what that was about. They just didn't get up here and practice the play. They knew each scene that took a part in, in Christ's life. So thank you, Miss Kay. I also want to thank the teachers, Mary and John Russell, 
Melissa Charles Matherly, Virginia David Simpson, Shannon Elder, Alicia Harris, Cynthia and Matthew, Matthew Coulter, Sarah and Zach Brady, Stacy and Adam Swallows, Ch Chastity and Cody Mann, Amanda and Joey Brady, Jackie and David Riggs, Rosalind and Bruce Pheasant, and Lisa Coulter, and of course myself. I want to thank you all. <laughs> Ask your children on Sundays when you're riding home, what did you learn today in Bible school? What would it hurt if you go home and you open that book of numbers and you go over what they learned? They will remember. They will remember. I learned a verse when I was 10 years old in vacation Bible school because we were asked to do that. And it wasn't until a friend of mine, husband, was dying with cancer. And I was at the foot of his bed, and that verse John 14, let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe that God, believe also in me. In my father's house there are many mansions. That came to me to pray over a friend's dying husband. These children will know a verse. They will know the Bible. and They will take that with them. We need children to be strong today in this world. There is so much ugliness in this world out there. And we want them to know, despite anything that goes on in their family, on at schools, that they still have one person, one God in this world that loves them more than anything else. That they always have him to go to. <laughs> and that way we'll have less drugs, less alcoholism. There's nothing that hurts a parent any more than a child that is addicted to some, something or another. And their life is forever going after that bottle of whiskey or bottle of pills. And that's, that's their life. We don't want that for our kids. And I'm asking uh, Elder Charles if he'll come forward and pray for our children this morning, the Children's Church and over the teachers, that we continue to do what the Holy Spirit has called on us to do. Thank you, Charles. So uh, I want to ask all the children to stand up. Everybody can stand up, but I want the children to stand up too. And as soon as we get done praying, then we'll be dismissed for class. Let's pray, guys. Gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you so much. We thank you so much for the children, Father God, that you give us, those special gifts, Father God, that you give us. And Father, we pray right now a hedge of protection over our children of this church. Father, we pray right now that you will go before them, Father God, and protect them each and every step and every day they take. God, we thank you so much for the, the opportunity to teach them your word, Father. And Father, we know if we teach them, and we know if we keep raising them in the way of the Lord, Father, they will, they will always return to it, Father God. And Father, we pray that you will protect them from this world, Father God, and the things that are going on in this world. And God, we pray, Lord Jesus, you'll just watch over us, Lord, and let us continue to do your work. Father, bless these children today. Bless them every day, Father God. In Jesus' holy name and all God's people said, amen. amen. I forgot to mention, guys, if you look up on your screen, the children in the children's church, when I went in to uh, pick up after the class, this was all what was written. The children had written on these boards. And I wanted you all to see what they write. And I thank you all again. Are you past the point of weary? Is your burden weighing heavy? Is it all too much to carry? Let me tell you about my Jesus. Do you feel that empty feeling? Cause shame's done all it's stealing. And you're desperate for some healing. 
Let me tell you about my Jesus. He makes a way where there ain't no way. Rises up from an empty grave. Ain't no sinner that he can't save. Let me tell you about my Jesus. His love is strong and his grace is free. And the good news is I know that he can do for you what he's done for me. Let me tell you about my Jesus. Let my Jesus change your life. Hallelujah, 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 amen, amen. Who can wipe away the tears from broken dreams and wasted years and tell the past to disappear? Oh, let me tell you about my Jesus. And all the wrong turns that you would go and undo if you could. Who could work it all for your good? Let me tell you about my Jesus. He makes a way where there ain't no way. Arises up from an empty grave. Ain't no sinner that he can't say. Let me tell you about my Jesus. His love is strong and his grace is free. And the good news is I know that he can do for you what he's done for me. Let me tell you about my Jesus. And let my Jesus change your life. Hallelujah, 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 amen, amen, amen. Who would take my cross to Calvary, pay the price for all my guilty? Who would care that much about me? Let me tell you about my Jesus. Oh, he makes a way where there ain't no way. Rises up from an empty grave. Ain't no sinner that he can save. Let me tell you about my Jesus. His love is strong and his grace is free. And the good news is I know that he can do for you what he's done for me. Let me tell you about my Jesus. And let my Jesus change your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. that are taking up offering to come on down. And I'm going to ask Mike Lawson to lead us in offertory prayer. Dream. 
you. Faithfulness has walked beside me. The winter storms made way for spring. In every season, from where I'm standing, I see the evidence of your goodness all over my life, all over my life. I see your promises in fulfillment all over my life, all over my Remember when I'm weak, a fear may come, but fear will leave. You led my heart to victory. You are my strength, and you always will be. I see the evidence of your goodness all over my life, all over my life. I see your promises in fulfillment all over my life, all over my life. the cross, the empty grave, the evidence is endless, all my sin rolled away, because of you, oh Jesus, see the cross, the empty grave, the evidence is endless, all my sin rolled away. Because of you, oh, Jesus, oh, I see the evidence of your goodness all over my life, all over my life. I see your promises in fulfillment. All over my life, all over my life, I see the evidence of your goodness all over my life, all over my Your promises in fulfillment all over my life, all over my life. So I said more than one New Year's resolution, but one of the New Year's resolutions that I have is to change my attitude and to try to see the good in things versus focusing on all the bad and the negative stuff because that's exactly what Satan wants. I mean, if you look at this world, it is so easy to see all the bad and to get focused on that, and then what does that do? It just brings you down, and then you're, like Joey says, you're crunchy, you know, you're just, you're always in a bad mood, and then that rubs off on everybody that you're around, your family, your co-workers, your friends, your church family. And so, like that song just said, there's all kinds of evidence of how good God is and the things that he is doing in, in our lives. And we need to focus on the good things. So, if you did not set a New Year's resolution, you know, that could be one for you, or, you know, I think it's good to set a New Year's resolution on you know, ways that we can be better for God, not for just ourselves, but better for God. And I, I do sometimes, if I'm having a very bad day, I just start sitting there and naming off all of my blessings. And you all, I mean, I, 
it just goes really fast because I'm blessed tremendously. But sometimes I forget about those blessings because I'm so focused on the negative stuff. So we need to focus on the good stuff in our lives. Um, our next song is called Dry Bones. And I think this year we need to shake off those dry bones. It is time for us to take, take a stand as Christians and be different in this world and not just fall in and fit in with everybody else. So you all sing with us, Dry Bones. So much we have lost as we look down the road where all the prodigals have walked. One by one, the enemy has whispered lies and led them off their slaves. But we know that. You are God, yours is the victory. We know there is more to come that we may not yet see. So with the faith you've given us, we'll step into the valley unafraid. As we call out to dry bones, come alive, come alive. We call out to dead hearts, come alive, come alive. Up out of the ashes, let us see an army rise. We call out to dry bones, come alive. God of endless mercy, God of unrelenting love. Rescue every daughter, bring us back the way was son. By your spirit, breathe upon them. Show the world that you alone can save. You alone can save. We call Dry bones come alive, come alive. We call out to dead hearts, come alive, come alive. Up out of the ashes, let us see an army rise. We call out to dry bones, come alive.
All the children may be excused. I think they're already excused, are they? We're good? Praise God. Happy New Year. <laughs> are you guys happy to be in the house of the Lord? Hallelujah. Oh, I am. Praise God. God is so good. Hallelujah. So let's, uh, let's start this year off right. Um, there is a way to start things off wrong. Let me give you an example. Trish, what's for dinner? That's starting off wrong, right? Honey, I missed you. I love you. You are so anointed and so beautiful. That's starting off. Right? Amen. And there's a way that we can actually start off our new year wrong. And that's dragging all the old garbage into the new year. Can you say, can you say this with me? No more. No. Hallelujah. Come on now. Let's all stand up on our feet. Not everybody. Just whoever can. Amen, please. <laughs> and um, I ask you, this is a selfish prayer request, but I'm just going to ask you, can you join me in agreement that I'm asking Holy Spirit to change me to be everything that he wants me to be and that, I, and that he rebukes my pride and that he shows me what I'm doing wrong. And um, hear me, family, I'm not perfect and I never want to hurt or offend any one of y'all. I love you. And I thank God for you. And I need you. I need you. Yeah, you need to hear this from me. From Trish and I, from my house, I need you. And when you're not here, I miss you. Please understand this. When you're not here, I miss you. Gary, Sonia, we miss you guys. And glory to God, you're here now. Amen. And there's many of you. There's many of you. And I pray that you know this. But I'm just so excited in what this New Year is bringing. And I ask you to stand up on your feet, and there's many right now that Father knows the pain that's shooting down the sciatic nerve or in your hip. And the beauty about our God is he's looking at you going, look at you. <laughs> you're standing in my presence, in my glory. And I know what you're battling with. I know what you're going through. Amen. How many of you know that God knows exactly what you're going God knows your business. He is God Almighty. He knows everything. And praise God, I'm here to tell you that he is for you and he loves you. Amen. He, listen, he wants, he wants, he wants the best for you. Amen. So join me in prayer because today, this morning, we're going to go back to the garden. Hallelujah. And I believe with all my heart that Holy Spirit is going to show us and reveal to us, not only through his written word, but in his holy presence and his Holy Spirit, he's going to take us back. And he's going to show and teach us things that it's just going to completely change our lives. Amen? Amen? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, God, we thank you for Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you, Father, that you are God Almighty and that you love us. And Father, I know, I know, Father God, because I fear you, that we can't even wrap our minds around your love. Even, even that Lord Jesus Christ, that you would leave perfection to come here to die for us, we still can't wrap our minds around how much you love us. And even, Lord Jesus Christ, when you resurrected from the dead, you took the keys from hell. That, Lord Jesus, you gave us your eternal love, your Holy Spirit in every one of us that believes in you, Lord Jesus Christ, and only in you. Oh, Father God, we thank you for this year of harvest. 2023, Father God. I promise you, Father God, that Open Arms Community Church, we will reap a mighty harvest for your kingdom, for we all work in Jesus' name, together as one. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's give God praise. Amen. And Father, we clap for you. We worship you. Father, we, we have smiles on our faces. Father, we're all standing in your glory in reverence unto you. Father, we love you with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. And Father, we love one another like you commanded us, Lord Jesus Christ, as we love ourselves. It's in your holy, mighty, precious, powerful name, Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. And all God's beloved said, amen. amen. God bless you guys. Hallelujah. Woo. Give somebody a high five or whatever you want to do. I mean, hey, amen. Praise God. We have a... Um, Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We have baptisms today. Let's give God praise. Hallelujah. And uh, we, got, we got Brother Kane over here talking to mom, Sister Courtney. 
um, for right now, those two. But um, if Holy Spirit moves on your heart to, uh, to, to be baptized, please. Amen. The water is, oh, just go like this with me. Yeah, it's just like that. Amen. And um, I encourage you to be baptized. Amen. So um, I know we just prayed, but pray for me as we go through this worship service. Um, as you guys know, uh, I'm not the teacher. Holy Spirit is. I'm just worshiping with you. Amen. And as I worship with you, I pray that God uses my mouth to say his word. Nothing in pride is his word. Amen. Amen. And I need your help. For those of you who have been planted here and rooted here and you're bearing Holy Spirit fruit, you guys know how I roll, right? I need you to put a smile on your face. Amen. I need you to, you know, hallelujah, amen, hallelujah. You know, we haven't sung this song in a while and I'm so excited because Holy Spirit said sing it. And you know when Father God sings, says, says sing it, we got to sing it, right? Are you all ready? If you're saved and you know it, clap your hand. If you're saved and you know it, clap your hand. If you're saved and you know it, then you're I love you guys. <laughs> Clap your hands. Hallelujah. Let's give God praise. Amen. Amen. Say with me, Father God. Hold time. In Jesus' name. Amen. So back to the garden. Amen. When we talk about going back to the garden, I, I really want you to grasp this. Everything was perfect. Everything was good. You know what's amazing? Holy Spirit said, we're going to turn off the lights for this service. You all good? Amen. Um, thank you, Pastor. Oh, I was like, how did Pastor do that? He didn't even stand up. <laughs> Aaron, Aaron did it upstairs. <laughs> I was like, man, that's anointing. <laughs> Seriously, Pastor, that's what, that's what I saw. I saw you go like this at the lights. Went. I'm like, whoa, hallelujah, it's a new season. <laughs> So I want, you, I want you to grasp this, that when, when Father God, when Agape, Father, Son, Holy Spirit made everything, everything was perfect. I need you to grasp this, that the Word of God says that in the coolness of the day, Adam and Eve, they would actually hear God's glory. And I want you to get this, that they would drop everything and run to Daddy. And they would run to Daddy knowing that Oh, you are good and perfect. And I just want to be with you. I just want to spend time with you. I want to know how you're doing today. But above all, I just want to be in your glory. And I love this because you see Adam and Eve right there. Yes, I put the little lamb right there. You see that little cute lamb right there? You're going to see the lamb. Can you get an amen? Amen. And so when we continue on the story, everything was perfect. They ruled over everything. And where's the lamb? Oh, there's the lamb. Right? And then on top of that, as time went on, things start to change. And unfortunately, what started to change was, if you notice this picture, Where's the lamb? There's the lamb. You see Adam in that garden. But my question to you is where's Eve, right? Where's Eve? Say it with me. Where's Eve? Right? And unfortunately, there was a time in history, and it's documented in the Holy Bible, and this is the introduction of pride. Eve was by herself when he was here. Where's the lamb? There's the lamb. My question is, do you, do you think that Adam and Eve loved God's creation? Do you think they cared for God's creation? Amen? Do you think that there was importance at one time to them, that they looked forward to seeing and hearing that God is there and I need to run to him? Amen? But unfortunately, when this took place, as I mentioned earlier, pride was introduced into the world. Amen? Say that filthy word with me, pride. Hear my heart. If, if you're breathing this morning, 
this is something that you struggle with. There ain't one soul that, not, that does not struggle with pride. This is our fallen nature. This is what makes us human, right? And what I need to show you is that when, when Eve was looking at this fruit, this fruit was rooted in pride. You see, the fruit was the fruit that was never intended to be harvested. That fruit that was on that tree was never intended for us to eat of it. Because the fruit is, say this with me, bad fruit. Right? And that bad fruit, it caused pride. So let me explain how this, how this works. In Genesis 3, 8, 10 says this, The man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God, and he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And check this out. Rather than running towards God, Brother BJ, rather than running towards our Creator, the, towards the blesser, ra rather than running towards the lover, they hid. They hid, Brother David. They hid. And they hid among the trees of the garden. And the Lord said, where are you? And he answered, I heard you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid. There's a lot of eyes in there, right? You see, what happened was pride has come into Adam. It's no longer about you, God. Come on, family. Help me, help me, help me, help me, help me, help me. It's no longer about your goodness and your perfection and your mighty and you're, 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 you're the worthy one. It's not about you. Now it's about me because now I'm looking at myself. It, it, isn't it interesting that once pride comes in, it's no longer about God. It's about me. Come on now. There's a lamb. You see, just like you, I have such a relationship with my God. It's more than 24-7. I, I, I don't know how to explain it. Constant conversation, laughter. How many of you know God is funny? <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> right? Oh, my goodness. He will crack you up. And the more you crack up with him, get ready. Because he'll crack you up even more. Right? Right? But then at the same time, he'll also let you know what hurts him. Yeah, he'll also let you know, right? Holy Spirit will say, don't do that. Holy Spirit will say, listen, and I want you to change it. But does God force himself on you? God is a lover of our soul. He's a keeper of our soul. If you have Jesus Christ, you're an eternal being. And God wants you to have this relationship with him. God wants you to go back to the garden where... We just hear him say, beloved, yes, daddy. Yes, daddy. Oh, I love you. I, I'm thankful. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you died for me. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that you're in my every breath, that you own me. Thank you, Father God, that you don't judge me, that you see the blood over me. You see the blood over my family, over my children. Thank you, Father God, that you rebuked religion. Oh, can I get a hallelujah? Hallelujah. I'll tell you right now, I can never be good enough. Amen. I can never be good enough for our God. I can't. But praise God, Father sent the only good one to come down from heaven. Amen. Woo! His name is Jesus. Hallelujah. And he loves you and he's for you and he died for you and he rose again for you and he lives inside of you. Hallelujah. He is yours. You are his forever and ever. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. So you, so you see, we, we talk about this pride. How many of you agree? Because you've all said amen. Some of you said yes. How many of you agree that Adam and Eve, they love God's creation? Amen. And this is why, hear my heart, family. This is just my relationship with God that I want to overflow and share with you. Whether you agree or not, we can talk after the service. That's okay. But hear my heart, I beg you in this worship service, get out of this. Do that with me, just get out of your head. Because this is how you block the anointing and the blessings of God. 
When you try to tell God, oh, I know this scripture. Oh, I don't agree with that. Oh, I, listen, we, we don't need to worry about that right now. All we need to do is just bless God and worship him, for he's the only one worthy, Brother Joseph. And this is all we're going to do for eternity is worship Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we talk about pride, and this is what happened. We had a relationship. We had a relationship with God, but once we ate of the fruit, I said we because it's all of us. We, had, we got pride that came in. And isn't it interesting? Listen, I'm not going to pick on anybody. I'm going to just pick on myself because that's a safe thing to do. Amen? That's the safe. Yeah, you pick on yourself, preacher. Right? <laughs> we receive Jesus, God on fire for the Lord, right? And then what happens? We start looking at other people and how they worship and the things that they do and the things that we think is holy. And we start to copy that. Don't get crunchy. I'm talking about me. Happy New Year. Do we need to sing again? If you're saved, I, mean, I know you guys are saved, right? And then what happened? Trish and I started getting frustrated because we're like, look at these people. They call themselves Christians, but they're just as bad as the world. And then guess what happens? We start becoming just like the world because now that's our focus and it's not on Jesus. Amen? Right? But glory to God for his mercy and grace where he told Trish and I, you need to stop looking at man and look at the son of man. Yeah. Amen. Focus your eyes on Jesus and Holy Spirit will encourage you. Praise God. So we had to go years ago back to the garden, brother. Praise Jesus. We had to go back to the garden, back to, don't you remember when you first called on Lord Jesus? Wherever you were at, is there any doubt in your mind that God Almighty didn't save your soul? No, you know for a fact, God Almighty, in you, in you confessing Jesus as Lord, you know for a fact. I'm looking at you. I can see fire in your eyes. I can see the glory of God all around this place. You know for a fact, God saved me and there ain't nothing and no one, nothing can change that in Jesus. Right? Woo. Hallelujah, all for you, Lord Jesus Christ. And the glory of our God is, he wants you back. Because the promise of our God, listen, you want to hear how awesome our God is? God doesn't restore back to the old. God restores to the gooder, to the gooder, to the gooder, to the gooder. Uh, this, this is more abundantly, amen? So say it with me, relationship. And I love this part because here God says to his beloved, listen to me, family. Who told you? Who told you that you were naked? I said this not too long ago. I didn't realize we were poor when I was little until somebody told me that I was poor. I didn't realize that I wore knockoffs until somebody that had the name brand told me that I had knockoffs on. And isn't that what this fallen world is? Just people criticizing one another, judging one another. And don't you love the heart of our God where he says, just being plain and simple, my beloved, who told you? You see, right now God's anointing in his Holy Spirit, he's asking you, who told you you're not worthy? Who told you you were sick? Who told you that you struggle with depression? Who told you that you have anxiety? Who told you that you have diabetes? Who told you? Because God is saying, I'm going to tell you something else. And his name is Jesus. Oh, come on now. Who told you? Right? We have to get back to the garden, family. We have to get back to the garden that when we hear Holy Spirit's precious, precious breath within our lungs. Do me a favor. Every one of y'all, just take a breath. If you don't want to, don't breathe. How often do we breathe a day? And isn't that beautiful that it's just God's reminder that here I am.
His very breath. Yahweh. 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 That's his name. Let's all do that together. Yahweh. Who told you? Because I am here to tell you that you are royalty. I am here to tell you that you are a beloved daughter of God. I am here to tell you that you are anointed and that his consuming fire lives within you. Which means that consuming fire will extinguish everything of this world. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. We got to move on. Praise God. We got to move on. Who told you that you were naked? The Lord God asked, have you eaten from the tree of whose fruit I command you not to eat? Now, remember that fruit, it's evil fruit, right? Say with me, I rebuke evil fruit. Thank you, Lord. The man replied, it was the woman. I'm going to say it just like, I'm going to say it just like he said it. It was the woman you gave me. Guys, let's just man up. Ain't that, don't that sound like us? Right? It ain't my fault. You made her. Remember I was sleeping? Remember? Right? I can't even find a rib right now. <laughs> Pastor, pray for me. A brother's allergic to snow. I'm like, where's my ribs at? Brother Zach, don't you dare laugh. I, I'm looking. You saw, I'm looking for it. I'm like, okay. Anyways. It's the woman you gave me who gave me the fruit, and I ate it. So then check this out. The Lord God asked the woman, and this is what I love about beloved daughters of God, anointed of God. What have you done? And here she says, the serpent deceived me. She replied, that's why I ate it. Isn't that awesome that she just owned up to it quick? Amen. There's power. In confession. Amen. May, may, may I say something that will rock your world and just get ready for this? I wish that Adam would have been straight up and just said, I messed up. Because that right there would have just changed everything. Amen. Amen. Say it with me, there are repercussions. For sin. Amen. Listen, I'm speaking to you Christians, all right? If you're living a life right now that you're committing sin and you know that it's not right and it's not holy or it's, there's repercussions for that. Don't blame God when the repercussions come. Can I get an amen? Listen, I, I understand that it's hard, but you have to face the fact that I committed sin, now I got to own up to it. Amen. If y'all don't believe me, listen to this, and I'm going to show you here in the Word. But you remember that lamb that I was showing you? The only reason why I kept putting the picture of that lamb is because I believe with all my heart that not only Adam and Eve loved and cared for all of God's creation, but I know for a fact that Father God loves, loves, loves all His creation. Amen? Amen. The repercussion for sin is this. The Lord God made garments of skin for Adam and his wife, and then he clothed them. Where did he get that skin? From that lamb. I tried to pick the, 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 the least gross, um, you know, gory picture. I was going to put just one that was just so gory up there. But this is one of the nice, friendly ones because we have some children in, in the sanctuary. But I, I need you to get this for, real quick. All right? I need you to get this real quick. Because of pride, the attention was no longer on God's glory and his perfection and his goodness and his mercy. The attention was now on me. And because I got insecure, I wanted nothing to do with God and I hid. But because I hid from God, God said, you sin, but now I'm going to pay for that sin so I can clothe you so you could still be in my presence because you are looking at your naked self. I'm going to clothe you. I'm going to kill 
I'm going to kill this beloved creature of mine so that you can cover your insecurities and we can have a relationship. Are you all hearing me now? Amen. After he drove out the man from the place of the east to the garden of Eden, cherubim and flaming sword flashing back and forth, guard the way to the tree of life. I like to see, show you this picture right here. Amen. And they were banished, right? Evicted. Kicked out, right? Say it with me, back to the garden. So, as you know, because we are, hallelujah, the chosen generation. We are the generation that will be raptured out of here. Amen. Glory be to God. Let me ask you something. What did you do, right? What, you do, what did you do to be the chosen generation? It's all God's favor, amen? I mean, we can't. So, I believe, hear my heart. I believe that as the chosen generation that will be raptured out of here when the trumpet sounds, don't you agree with, if you don't agree, don't say amen. But don't you agree with me that there's a higher level of expectation from the last to do work? To say this word with me, harvest? harvest. Amen. So this is what we're going to do. In the, oh my goodness, Lord, help me. Praise God. Huh? Hey, praise God. It's just going to be you, you and me. For we know that our earthly house, this tent, is destroyed. We have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For in this we groan earnestly, desiring to be clothed with our habitation, which is, say this with me, from heaven. If indeed, having been clothed, we shall not be found naked. Amen? Amen? Say it with me, we're not naked. Say it with me, there's no need to hide. Let me explain. You saw what took place in the garden. And we're going back to the garden, are we not? Are we going back to the garden, family? So check this out. Here's the Lamb of God. You see, what took place in that garden with Adam and Eve and that Lamb was just God showing us from the very beginning of the Bible his promises that would manifest through the Holy One, Lord Jesus Christ. You see, when Lord Jesus Christ had to kill that lamb, can you imagine what he was going through? See, it takes moments like this to really dig deep in our relationship with God. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, we say agape, amen, the perfect love. Lord Jesus always existed. If you don't think so, you don't know the Bible. And we need to talk. Amen. But Lord Jesus Christ was right there when he had to take whatever it was to kill and to have blood and to make the skins to cover Adam and Eve. Could you imagine what our God was going through when the Father himself was looking at this going, my son, you're going to be... Can you imagine what Lord Jesus Christ was feeling when that little creature was screaming? Remember, this never happened before because it's perfect in the garden. But this is the price of our sin. This is the repercussion of our sin. And I believe with all my heart we live so spoiled now as Christians. We use grace like it's a credit card. It ain't no credit card. Grace is a person. His name is Holy Spirit. Amen. See, by the grace of God, we have the Lamb of God. His name is Lord Jesus Christ. He is my Savior. He is my Lord. He is my Master. He owns me. And it's His blood that now covers me. Hallelujah. For we are now in this tent and we groan, being burdened. Not because we want to be unclothed. But further clothes. That means we want to be with daddy. Amen. Every day I'm like, is it, is it time? Every day, with, every day in, with me in my house, every day is Christmas morning. I still have my Christmas lights up. And I don't think I'm taking them down. Hallelujah. 
I'm going to be that guy. It's March and they got the Christmas. It's always Christmas in my house. Y'all remember that if you want to buy me a gift. Merry Christmas. <laughs> but further clothed, that mortality may be swallowed up by life. Now he, say it with me, he, say it good or agape, has prepared us for this very thing is God who has also given us the spirit as a guarantee. So we are always confident knowing that while we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. This is where we're at right now, family. But check this out. We walk by faith and not by sight. I love this because what did Adam and Eve do in the garden with God? Walk with him. And now Holy Spirit is saying, you have 24-7 access to me. That you can walk with me. You don't have to hide because you're, you're clothed by my holy blood. Amen. Don't you love it that there's nothing that come, can come against you and your relationship with God. It's up to you. Golden Corral. Don't be mad at me if I ate four plates and you only had one. I'm taking all the blessings. Can I get a hallelujah? For we are confident, yes, well pleased, rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. I want to give a word of encouragement to the entire church body, to his holy people. There's some of us that last year... We lost, some, we lost some people. And hear my heart when I say that word lost, we miss them. But I want to encourage you through Holy Spirit that the very next breath they took, hallelujah, they're in perfection, in glory, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. And hear my heart, hear my heart. Even if they were offered to come back, mm -mm. You, you, I promise you that. Father God tells me, do you want to go back? Mm -mm. Nope. I stay right here. Amen. Right here. Hallelujah. This is all the more urgent for you know how late it is. If you all would stand up on your feet. Praise God. We're going to close right now. This is all the more urgent for you now, for you, for you know how late it is. Time is running out. Wake up. Say it with me. Wake up. For our salvation is nearer now than when we first believed. The night is almost gone. The day of salvation will soon be here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The trumpet's going to sound soon. So remove your dark deeds like dirty clothes and put on. Say it with me. Put on the shining armor of right living. Because we belong to the day. We must live decent lives for all to see. Don't participate in the darkness of wild parties and drunkenness. Or in sexual prom promise, yeah, that's right. And immoral living or in quarreling and jealousy. Don't, 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 don't partake in that, family. Do I judge you? Can I judge you? No. God is our only judge. I'm just trying to encourage you. If that's part of your life right now, bring it to the altar. Holy Spirit saying, you want a party? I'm going to give you a party. Can I get an amen? Oh, hallelujah. Check this out. Instead, clothe yourself with the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ. And don't let yourself think about ways to indulge your evil desires. Lord Jesus Christ says in the Gospel of John, you did not choose me. Does that not blow our minds right there? Because last time I checked, we're the ones that said, Jesus Christ, I make you Lord and Savior. Will you come into my heart? Be one in me. Holy Spirit, reign in me. Seal me with your salvation. In human thinking, don't we think that I chose you? But get ready to get your mind blown. God says, you didn't choose me. I chose you. Hallelujah. You are anointed. You are anointed. Hallelujah. I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit. And that your fruit should remain, that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give you. It boils down to this beloved family. We had the tree of life that you guys know the story because we just went through it. And we know what happened with that tree. But what Father God did with the kingdom of heaven is that the kingdom of heaven is no longer unattainable. The kingdom of heaven is now on the inside of a believer in Lord Jesus Christ. Can I get a hallelujah? Hallelujah. Oh, 
Say it with me. It gets gooder and gooder. Remember, we talked about this. He drove Adam and Eve out of the garden, and then he put an angel and he put a flaming sword flashing back and forth to guard the way in the tree of life. Check this out. That flaming sword is Holy Spirit inside of you guarding, hallelujah, our salvation in the way, the truth, and the life. Give God praise, hallelujah. We have some songs that are going to play. But I want, I want to know if there's someone here this morning that you heard what Holy Spirit had to say. You feel the presence of God Almighty in the room. You know that you're moved in ways that you're like, all right, I'm done. I'm not going to fight it no more. If you're ready to know for, for sure that if you was to take your last breath, that your very next breath is in the presence of God our Father, of Lord Jesus Christ, of his spirit in heaven. I'm praying right now for your soul. If that is you, would you be bold enough to raise your hand and say, I need to start this new year right. I need to make Jesus Christ my Lord and Savior. I'm going to take the time. Praise God. So everyone in here is saved. Every soul in here knows Jesus Christ is Lord. Every soul in here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I believe God deserves praise for that. Hallelujah. Say it with me, I am saved. Say it with me, I am sealed. Say it with me, I am delivered. Say it with me, I am redeemed. Say it with me, I am healed. Say it with me, I am royalty. I encourage you in Jesus' name to come to this altar. Listen, let's just worship him as if the trumpet's going to sound in this next half an hour. Amen. God bless you guys.